I like to give double honors under the apostles and the artists of great millstone. Orland is true from, and I like to say, peace and salutations unto the hopefully elect. And today is Monday, June 10th, 2024, Missile Monday. And I have this article from Newsweek, and the headline reads, White House Issues Nuclear Weapons Update. So it was published, you know, June 8th. So I'm just going to go into this article, you know, and bring out a few scriptures, Lord willing, this lesson is edifying straight to the point. And as you can see in the clip you know, that I featured, you know, you had Russian President Vladimir Putin, you know, making threats towards, you know, the U.S., which, you know, Putin is just one of many, you know, of these world leaders that are making threats towards, you know, Babylon, you know, but as we know, prophecy or well, is prophesied that Russia is going to take down America. You know, ultimately we know it's going to be our Lord Yahweh Shai, you know, along with the angels, but on a smaller scale, you know, Russia is going to be the one to, you know, destroy America, you know. So it says the United States might have to expand its nuclear weapons arsenal in response to Russia, China, and North Korea growing their nuclear weapons programs at breakneck pace, according to a stark warning from senior White House office. So yeah, man, those three nations, you know, as of lately, you know, have been, you know, upping their nuclear arsenal, man. They have been expanding their nuclear programs, you know, again, Russia, you know, China and North Korea, you know, they have been updating their nuclear weapons, man, you know. But as we know, the two main nations that possess the most nuclear weapons are Russia and America. And between those two nations, Russia has more nuclear weapons than America. And again, you know, it's part of prophecy. So it's understandable why Russia would have more, you know, nuclear missiles or warheads, so to speak, than America, you know. But those three main nations, those three nations are going to be, you know, Three of the main nations that are going to come up against, you know, America during World War Three. Again, Russia being that driving force, you know. So continuing on, it says, Pranay Vadi, special assistant to the president and senior director for arms control at the White House, made the remark during a speech to the Arms Control Association on Friday says Vadi's comments come against the backdrop of growing tensions between the U.S. and both Russia and China, sparking fears of an all-out war. Well, there will be an all-out war, man. You know, we're pretty much in the midst of World War Three. You know, even though it is, you know, it's not official, you know, it's still brewing, man. We know that, you know, this war is going to take place no matter if these nations don't want that war to happen, it's going to happen. It's inevitable, you know. <clears throat> Says in May, Russia conducted tactical nuclear weapons drill in response to a provocative statements and threats by individual Western officials. 
Host and guests on Russian state TV have reportedly threatened nuclear strikes on Western powers, including the U.S., France, and the U.K. It's like yeah, the U.S., France, the U.K., and the Netherlands. And as we know, you know, three of those nations are a part of, you know, the NATO and the EU. You know, it says, Vadi commented, absent a change in adversary arsenals, we may reach a point in the coming years where an increase from current deployed numbers is required. We need to be fully prepared to execute if the president makes that decision. If that day comes, and it's not if, it's when, said it will result in a determination that more nuclear weapons are required to deter our adversaries and protect the American people and our allies and partners. And, you know, as we know, man, America is there for, you know, the American people are through, you know, the allies of America are through because even the allies of this place are going to turn on here, man. They're going to turn on America and they're going to help destroy this place as well, you know. So there's nothing that, you know, the United States can do to pretty much stop this place from being destroyed. It only has, you know, so long left, you know, or Esau only has so left, so long left to rule a man, you know, because, you know, all these nations, you know, they, they pretty much want to get things done by, you know, 2030, you know, that year has been, you know, the goal that a lot of these, you know, nations want to reach as we know uh, America, you know, they have, you know, the agenda 2030, you know, there's certain things that they want to get done, but this, this place doesn't have, you know, another six years left, you know, we'll see, you know, what happens, you know, for the rest of the six months of this year. And, you know, if we're still here, you know, even 2025, you know, we'll see what happens, but we're, we're at that, we're at that point, man, where, you know, all these things, are happening because again, you know, we're at the point where, you know, the mark of the beast is slowly being introduced to the people, man, you know, slowly being normalized, you know, people are having, you know, dreams and visions and, you know, people already have it, you know, and that is the main prophecy that has to take place before this war can take place, you know, that prophecy being the mass implementation of the mark of the beast which is spoken of in revelation chapter 13 verse 16 down to 18 man you know people getting microchips in their hands and in their heads man to be able to live in the society to come because what's normal now won't be normal in you know the world to come you know things are going to be way different so continuing on this is during this Address Vadi warned that China, Russia, and North Korea are all expanding and diversifying their nuclear arsenals at a breakneck pace, showing little or no interest in arms control. And they are, you know, they all, all three of those nations are expanding their nuclear arsenals, man, and they are developing them relatively quick. You know, this is why they're conducting these various tests, man, because they're getting ready to take this place down, you know says he also claimed that the three powers, along with Iran, are increasingly cooperating and coordinating with each other in ways that run counter to peace and stability, threaten the United States or our allies and our partners and exacerbate region tensions, including by sharing missile and drone technology and China has been helping Russia, you know, with weapons, as we know. But those four nations, because they also mentioned Iran, you know, because, again, Iran is just one of the many nations that hate America as well, man. You know, <clears throat> as we know, Iran, you know, is predominantly, you know, an Ishmaelite country, you know, or is an Ishmaelite country, man. You know, so you have the Russians, which are Edomites, you know, uh, China. And North Korea, which I think, you know, the Koreans might be Moabites as well. I'm not sure. But, you know, if they are, then, you know, both are, you know, Moabites. And then you have Iran, you know, Ishmael, man. They hit America and they're ready to take this place down, man. 
So continuing, it says, according to the Statista figures for January 2023, Russia had the largest nuclear arsenal in the world with 5,889 warheads, followed by the U.S. with 5,244. China had 410 warheads, but it's rapidly, it's like it, but is rapidly expanding its arsenal, while American allies, France and the U.K. had 290 and 225 nuclear warheads, respectively. So again, man, as you can see, and that was just of last year, you know, January of last year, they're telling you that Russia and America, it's like your Russia and America possess the most nuclear warheads. But again, they just told you in this article, Russia has more nuclear warheads than America. So that should tell you something, man. Russia is going to take this place down, you know, and that's prophecy. So America could, even if, you know, America catches up to, you know, Russia somehow, if they manage to develop as many warheads or, you know, they're, they're, man, it's it's over for this place, man. It's over, you know, because that right there, that should be alarming for a lot of people that this nation has more warheads, man. So let's just do that math real quick. 588 or 5889 and 5244. So. Slack here. So Russia has 645 more nuclear warheads than the U.S., you know. And then they're worried that, you know, they're they're developing they're developing them fast. Well, they should be, you know, because prophecy is going to take place. So continuing on, it says, according to Reuters, the U.S. has not exceeded the limit of fifteen hundred fifty strategic nuclear warheads, which was set out in the 2010 New START Treaty signed with Moscow. Though Russia suspended its participation in 2023 as tensions surged following its all-out attempted invasion of Ukraine in February 2022, <clears throat> excuse me, Slovakia, on Wednesday, Russia's President Vladimir Putin warned he could deploy conventional missiles within range of Western powers after a number of these gave Ukraine permission to hit Russian military targets on its own soil with their weapons for the first time. Since two days later, on June 7th, Putin was asked whether Russia should hold a nuclear pistol to the Temple of the West during the St. Petersburg International Economic Forum. But he said this was not required at present. Says referring to the nuclear weapons, he commented, the use is possible in an exceptional case in the event of a threat to the sovereignty and territorial integrity, integrity of the country. I don't think that such a case has come. There is no such need. During an interview with Fox News host Sean Hannity on Thursday morning, Donald Trump, the presumptive 2024 Republican presidential nominee, claimed nuclear war is a bigger threat to the U.S. than climate change. In a <laughs> <laughs> nuclear war is a bigger threat than climate change, man. You know, it's obvious because, again... If it wasn't, then these, then Russia, China, and North Korea wouldn't be developing as many nuclear weapons as they are, man. You know, as they say it at breakneck speed. So, of course, they all know, man. They all know that this place is going to go down. And indeed, that is the biggest threat to this place, man. Nuclear war. Because they know that, you know, if war were to happen, World War Three were to happen, which it is, you know, that... America would be obliviated, in which it is, man, you know, because even though they have their missiles, yes, they're going to, you know, hit their targets as well, but 
there's going to be more missiles hitting this place, you know, than any other place, you know, it is slated to get hit, you know. So I'm going to finish up. It says he commented, I don't want to see this country get into a nuclear war and be so badly damaged. What we say won't matter. This place won't matter. Nothing will matter because practically nothing is going to be here anymore. Wow. Says the level of power and weaponry, that's real weaponry. That's worse than the weaponry we were talking about a little while ago. Says this obliteration may be world obliteration. And we have a man is lucky. He says, and we have a man is not capable of discussing it. The only global warming that matters to me is nuclear global warming because that's the real deal. Wow, man. <clears throat> and that's what Putin said, man. So he knows, man, that indeed these nuclear weapons do possess the capability to destroy the entire earth. But as we know, the whole earth won't be destroyed, man, because, you know, the angels, they'll be holding the earth in place, man, you know, to stop it from cracking, you know. But again, this is this is coming from Putin. He knows, man, he knows, you know, the capabilities of these weapons and what they can do, you know, but he clearly said it won't matter. You know, Russia won't matter. Nothing will matter because, again, the amount of damage that these weapons are going to do, man, this is just is going to be insane, you know. So he knows, man, he knows. So let's get it. I'm going to start in the book of Isaiah, chapter 54 and verse 16. It says, Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals and the fire and that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. And yeah, man, as you can see in that article, they're telling you that Russia, China and North Korea are developing these nuclear weapons relatively quick, man. So, you know, the modern day Smith would be, you know, those scientists that are developing these weapons, man. You know, because a modern blacksmith is one that deals in making weapons, you know, such as swords, man. But what, you know, is the modern sword today, as we know, it's the gun. But what is the ultimate sword is these weapons, man, these nuclear missiles that are being created, man. And that is the waster to destroy, man, because that's what these missiles are going to do, man. They're going to waste this place. It's going to destroy it, man. And it's going to be left completely desolate, you know. <clears throat> so this is what, you know, a lot of these nations are worried about, you know, the destruction. You know, while you have the American citizens here that are pretty much oblivious to the fact that a third world's war is going to take place, man, these other nations are aware and they know, you know, this is why they're getting ready, you know, because they know that Babylon is going to go down soon. So I'm going to get the book of Ezekiel chapter 38. I'm going to start at verse one it says, and the word of the Lord came unto me saying, son of man, set thy face against Gog in the land of Magog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And prophesy against him and say, Thus saith the Lord Yahweh, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal. And that's what the word Russia means, man. You know, chief prince, which that word in the Hebrew will be, you know, Ra'ash, Shar, you know, chief prince. Verse 4, and it says, I will turn thee back and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth and all thine army horses and horsemen and all them clothed with all sorts of armor even a great company with bucklers and shields and all them handling swords so yeah man the lord is putting that old ussr spirit back on russia you know this is why vladimir putin is making these various statements man you know he's ready to take america down you know because if he is still the president you know of russia when that time comes, which, you know, hopefully, you know, he is. But either way it goes, you know, Russia is going to take this place down, man. You know, that's ultimately what it's going to come down to, you know, the bear, which is a representation of Russia and the whore, you know, America. You know, because that's what America is like and unto a woman, you know, that is a whore. You know, because she's dealt with all these different nations, man. 
and all these nations are going to be angry, which I'm going to get that in Revelation 17. So this is verse 5 in Ezekiel 38. It says, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya, with them, all of them, with shield and helmet, Gomer and all his bands, the house of Togomar of the north quarters, and all his bands, and many people with thee. Be thou prepared, and prepare for thyself, thou and all thy company that are assembled unto thee, and be thou a guard unto them. And yeah, man, all these nations that, you know, are allies with Russia, Russia is going to be a guard unto them, man. You know, because as we know, it mentioned, you know, Persia, Ethiopia, and Libya. So, you know, you have, <clears throat> you know, all those, you know, UAE countries, you know, the United Arab Emirates, you know, those Ishmaelite countries, you know, certain Hamite, you know, countries, you know, Ethiopia and Libya, you know, even Elam, you know, Russia is going to be a guard to these nations, man. You know, because they know, again, Russia is going to take this place down, man. They're going to help Russia take this place down. You know, that's the time that we're in, man. We're in a time of war, you know. So while, you know, the American citizens are, you know, doing what they do best, partying and bullshitting, you know, these other nations are getting ready for war. So again, I'm going to get the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 3 and verse 8, straight to the point. <clears throat> it says, a time to love and a time to hate. A time of war and a time of peace, man. And that's the time that we're in. We're in a time of hate and we're in a time of war because that's all you're hearing about is war, man. You know, you still have Russia and the Ukraine going at it. You still have, you know, the small hats and, you know, Ishmael going to war over there in the land, you know, and these different skirmishes that are going on, man. You know, that's all you're hearing about. But that main war is going to be between Russia and America. You know, Babylon versus Russia, you know, and we already know what the end is going to be of this place. Destruction. So to back this up, I'm going to get the book of Matthew chapter 24 and verse 6. And it says, and ye shall hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that ye be not troubled for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes in diverse places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. So, yeah, man, all these are indeed the beginning of sorrows, man. But that, again, that's what you're hearing about wars and rumors of war, even though it's not official. You know, World War Three is still a rumor of war, man, because it's going to happen, you know. You still have these different wars that are taking place, but that's going to be the main war. World War Three, the war to end all wars, man. This is why these nuclear weapons are being created, you know, for this particular time that we're living in, man. We're living in some very exciting yet scary times, man, because we're living in that time where we're going to see Russia take down America. We're also living in that very same time where we're going to see our Lord Yahweh Shai come back, man. You know, because these people, oh, well, you know, that'll be, you know, 50 years or something like that, man. Anybody that's saying that, you know, they lack understanding because our Lord, you know, he's, he's coming back soon. You know, he is coming back very soon because he told us, you know, just in this chapter alone, you know, the things that we will see, you know, that will, you know, lead up to his second coming, you know, but. You know, again, the, the, the majority of the people <clears throat> are unaware of the things that are going to take place upon this war, man. It's like it, that are going to take place on this earth. So I'm going to get the book of Joel, chapter 3, and verse 9. And it says, Proclaim ye this among the Gentiles. Prepare war. Wake up the mighty men. Let all the men of war draw near. Let them come up. Beat your plowshares into swords and your pruning hooks into spears. Let the weak say I am strong. And that's what they're doing, man. You know, because, you know, a plowshare, you know, a pruning hook, those are farming tools, man. You know, but they're pretty much taking their money, you know, that would normally be used, you know, for agriculture, you know, farming. And they're putting it into 
developing these weapons, man. And in that article that I just brought out, man, they're sh it's showing you, man. Joel chapter 3, verse 9 and 10 is taking place, you know. These other nations, you know, that were, you know, weaker nations, you know, they now possess the same nuclear capabilities as America. Because once upon a time, America was the only nation that possessed these weapons, you know. Then Russia eventually caught up, you know, it was a nuclear arms race between these two nations. But, you know, these other nations also, you know, have gotten involved and they're developing their weapons as well. Even though they don't have as many as, you know, America and Russia, they still have them, man. That's the weak saying they're strong, man. You know, and this is why they're developing these weapons relatively fast because they're going to help take this place down. You know, so this is the book of Revelation, chapter 17 and verse. Mm, you know what? I'll start at 14. It says these shall make war with the lamb and the lamb shall overcome them for he is the Lord of lords and king of kings and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. So yeah, man, during, you know, the midst of World War Three, these other nations, <clears throat> you know, they're going to stop fighting each other to try to, you know, fight our Lord, you know, and they're going to be scared, but the Lord is going to put that spirit on them to fight him, which, you know, I'll you know, get that in a second address, you know, but as we know, during the midst of World War Three, you know, our Lord is going to come back, man, and take all these nations down, you know. But as we know, on a smaller scale, Russia is going to destroy America, you know, with the aid of our Lord, Yahweh Shai and the angels. So verse 15, and it says, and he saith unto me, the waters which thou sawest, where the horse sitteth, are peoples and multitudes and nations and tongues. And the ten horns which thou sawest upon the beasts, these shall hate the whore, and shall make her desolate and naked, and shall eat her flesh, and burn her with fire. See, yeah, as we know, you know, the ten horns, you know, that are a part of the, the, the beast, you know, the beast system, you know, they're ultimately going to turn on her, you know, and help destroy her as well, man. So that's Russia's, not Slakia, not Russia, America's allies are going to turn on her, you know, because they're going to be angry and you know, realize all the evil that this place has done. And they're going to shoot their missiles over here as well, man, to help destroy this place, <clears throat> you know. So to back that verse 14, up, I'm going to get second address chapter 13, you know, because, again, this is what is going to happen, you know, in the midst of World War Three, you know, I'm going to read the whole chapter. But, you know what, I'll start at verse 1. This is the book of Second Edges, chapter 13, and verse 1. And it says, And it came to pass after seven days, I dreamed a dream by night. And lo, there arose a wind from the sea that it moved all the waves thereof. And be lucky, and I beheld, and lo, that man waxed strong with the thousands of heaven. And when he turned his countenance to look, all the things that were under him, it's like yeah, all the things trembled that were seen under him. See, so, yeah, man, this is talking about our Lord Yahweh Shai, man, because everyone and everything is going to be in fear when they see him, man. As it says, you know, every eye shall see. You know, everyone is going to see Yahweh Shai, man, and every knee is going to bow, you know, whether you want to or not, man. You're going to bow when you see the Lord, you know. Verse four, and it says, and whensoever the voice went out of his mouth, they all burned that heard his voice, like as the earth filleth when it filleth the fire. See, yeah, man, the Lord, you know, he isn't going to do any talking, man. As it says, he's going to, you know, let out a cry, you know, as a travailing woman, he's going to let out that war cry, man. You know, because the Lord, he's angry, man. And the anger that we feel is nothing compared to the anger that he feels, man. You know, because the Lord is going to pay back, you know, you know, those Romans, you know, 
that poked his side with that spear, man. And it says, you know, that they're going to see him, you know, proving that reincarnation is real, you know. So he's going to pay these nations back and he's going to take these nations down, starting with the nation of Edom, you know. And I just want to get kind of to the point. But Slocky was, well, yeah, I'll just keep reading this verse five. And it says, and after this, I beheld and lo, there was a great multitude, Slocky, there was gathered together a multitude of men out of number from the four winds of the heaven to subdue the man that came out of the sea. And yeah, man, these other nations, they're going to try to fight the Lord. Verse 6, but I beheld and lo, he had graved himself a great mountain and flew upon it. It's talking about that fathership, man, because it's going to be extremely huge, man. This is what Edris is saying. Verse 7, but I would have seen the region or a place where out the hill was graven and I could not see it. Edris thought that the Lord, you know, cut a mountain, you know out of the earth, but he couldn't see it, you know. And that's how huge this chariot is going to be, man, that the Lord is going to be on. Verse 8, and it says, After this I beheld, and lo, all they which were gathered together to subdue him were sore afraid, and yet durst fight. And yeah, man, they're going to be extremely afraid when they see the Lord, man, because they're going to know that they messed up, you know. They're not going to want to fight, but the Lord is going to make them. You know, and he's going to utterly destroy them, man. You know. Verse 9, and it says, And lo, as he saw the violence of the multitude that came, he neither lifted up his hand, nor held sword, nor any instrument of war. But only I saw that he sent out of his mouth, as it had been a blast of fire, and out of his lips a flaming breath, and out of his tongue. He cast great sparks and tempests. Yeah, talking about that laser beams, man, that are going to be coming from the chariots, man. That concentrated fire that is going to beat them to powder, as it says, man. You know? And that's what's going to be happening, you know, during the midst of World War Three, man. You know, it's only going to take the Lord one hour to destroy this place, you know, pursuing to Revelation chapter 18, you know? And, you know, America is going to be left completely desolate, man. So I'm just going to get this straight to the point, you know. So this is the book of Isaiah, chapter 34. And I'm going to start at verse 5. And it says, For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Behold, it shall come down upon Idumea and upon the people of my curse to judgment. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood, and it is made fat with fatness, and with the blood of lambs and goats, and with the fat of kidneys, of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord hath a sacrifice in Basra, and a great slaughter in the land of Idumea, talking about America, you know, because America is modern day Idumea, you know, modern day Basra, you know. Because those were chief cities in the land of Edom, man. Idumia and Basra. You know, the Lord is going to take this place down, man. So I'm going to jump to verse 10. So it says, it shall not be, you know, talking about the fire. It shall not be quenched night nor day. The smoke thereof shall go up forever. From generation to generation it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. But the cormorant and the bittern shall possess it. The owl also and the raven shall dwell in it. And he shall stretch out upon it the line of confusion and the stones of emptiness. So yeah, man, that's describing how America is going to look. After this destruction takes place, because it is going to be burning for an extremely long time, man. Because you have to think, you know, there's a lot of, you know, oil 
and this land, you know, these gas stations and all these things, you know, there's a lot of flammable things here. I'll just say, you know, God is going to cause this place to burn for a very long time, man. So eventually, you know, that fire is going to have to put itself out. But the only, you know, thing that's going to dwell over here is desert creatures, man. As it says, you know, no one is going to be able to pass through here again, man. You know, America will never be inhabited by man again. It's going to be left as an example, just like Sodom and Gomorrah was left in a, as an example of how not to live. Well, America is going to be that example of how not to live, how not to run a kingdom, man. And it's going to be remembered forever, man. You know? So, Lord willing, this lesson was edifying. I want to give all praise, honor, and glory. Do to Yahweh, Bahashem, Yahweh Shai, Bahashem, and Kakwadash. I'd like to give double honors unto the apostles and the artists of Great Millstone. Or I learned this truth from, and I'd like to say peace and salutations unto the hopefully elect. To the next time I say, Shalom.